my challenge to myself is 10 lenses in 10 minutes. Hello, welcome back to the channel. Got a busy one for you today. My challenge to myself is 10 lenses in 10 minutes after the introduction. So don't start the clock yet. Followed by five photographers in five minutes. I'm going to introduce you to 10 Voigtlander lenses for Leica cameras, but you can use these lenses on Sony, Fuji, any mirrorless camera. This is just a summary of each lens. And then if there's any lens in particular you'd like me to do a review on, drop me a comment below and I'll then do a full detailed review on individual lenses. But I just wanted to show you what Voigtlander lenses have to offer. If you've never shot with a manual focus lens before, you're definitely missing out. Because I shoot with Leicas, manual focus lenses is normal to me. So whether it's made by Voigtlander or Carl Zeiss or Leica, they all function in a similar way. But people which probably benefit the most from some of these lenses are photographers which are used to autofocus potentially kit lenses, then you really will see a big step up in optical performance compared to your kit lens. I taught myself photography with a manual focus Voigtlander lens. If you want to learn what the f-stop is and aperture is and ISO and you're just starting out or you just use an automatic camera and so you've never had to think about it, using manual focus lenses like some of the ones I'm going to show you is the perfect way to get to grips on what the camera's really doing and in turn it'll probably improve your photography. Okay, I haven't got a clock to stop and I haven't got my watch on. Pretend, I won't do it exactly, but roughly speaking, start the clock. 10 lenses, 10 minutes, let's do it. Lens number one, the Voigtlander 50mm Super Wide Helia. This is the LTM version, which means like a thread mount. You've heard me talk about this in previous videos. Some of the lenses are going to show you are M mount, which is obviously like a M bayonet fit. Some of these lenses I have in both mounts but they do have slight variations. So for the first lens there's the black one is the M mount, the silver one is the LTM mount. Amazing lens. If you like 50mm means basically 50mm on a full frame sensor is crazy wide. 50mm on a crop sensor such as a whether it's APS-C 1.5 crop or like a two times crop micro four thirds, this will give you a 30, a 30 mil lens on a micro four thirds camera, two times 15. And it's tiny, look at that. And because it's a Helia design, Helia design lenses are pretty much as sharp as it gets. So if you want to shoot wide angle landscapes or travel photography, and you want a pocketable size, with pretty much as good as it gets optics, definitely consider the Voigtlander 50mm. One thing to note, on certain sensors you'll get purple fringing around the corners on some of the lens models, so do be careful. The Voigtlander M mount version used to give me purple fringing on the like M9, meaning on, the, on your picture the edges will be purple. I'll include an example to show you. Obviously shooting film, you're not going to have any problems. If you're wondering how you would compose a 50mm lens on say a Leica camera, when you buy Voigtlander wide angle lenses, make sure that you get the wide angle viewfinder to go with it. This is not going to be an issue if you're shooting it on a Sony, a Nikon Z, a Canon, EOS R, any kind of mirrorless camera, you don't need this. But if you're shooting it on a Leica or any other rangefinder camera, you will need this to be able to compose your shot. The place you'll often see the Voigtlander 50mm is on this camera. This is the Voigtlander Besser L and I can link the review to this. It's a special camera, it has no viewfinder. But I won't, you can see that in that video. I've got to keep this quick. 50mm lens comes standard on this body. So if you fancy yourself a new camera, which is amazing, and you fancy a 50mm lens, look online for the Voigtlander Besser L and you might get a deal where you get the camera for maybe only an extra hundred pounds on top of the lens. So top tip, that's how I bought mine. Lens number one, Voigtlander 50mm Super Wide Helia. Coming in LTM mount and M mount. Just to mention, M mount 50mm lens 
focuses down to 0.5 meters. LTM, 50 mil lens, focuses down to 0.3 meters. So this is the LTM version is better because it focuses closer. If you're trying to decide which one to get, lens number one. Lens number two. And lens number two is also amazingly tiny. These lenses are so small. Just to give you a quick size comparison. There's my trusty like M6 you've seen in previous videos. And these lenses are small and that's with a hood on as well. Just to go back, the 15 millimeter Voigtlander has a fixed kind of petal shaped hood. I'm not sure of the correct term. This hood won't come off and it will not accept filters. The MAD also fix hood, but will accept filters. 52 thread mount. It's gonna to be tough to do in 10 minutes. Back to lens number two, the 21 millimeter color scope R Voigtlander. This is an F4 lens. The previous lens was an F4.5. Super small, crazy sharp. Color scope R lenses are also renowned. If any color scope R lens pretty much, whether it's on a vintage film camera or a modern lens today, the color scope R design means you're gonna get contrasty, super sharp images. So if you see that name, you're pretty much guaranteed you're gonna get high image quality. Again, I have the M mount in black and I have the LT M mount in silver. There's a size difference because I've got the hood taken off the M mount version at the moment. With the hood removed, you can fit 39 thread filters. I can share some examples. Okay, speeding up. Lens number three looks very much the same as lens number two. This is lens number three. This is the Voigtlander Snapshot Scope R. 25 millimeter f4 lens tiny tiny bit bigger than the 21 millimeter now this comes in m out and ltm out one thing to be aware of the m out is range finder coupled meaning you can focus it on a like a m camera the ltm 25 millimeter scope r is not range finder coupled so it means it's designed to go on the besser l which doesn't have a range finder so on this camera, it doesn't make any difference. So I bought it mostly to use on the Besser L. But just to be aware, if you use it on any range finder camera, you have to scale focus by basically guesstimating the distance from your subject, dialing it in, take a shot, very sharp, very similar characteristics to the 21 millimeter. Okay. Lens number four. This is a lens I've had quite a long time. This is the Voigtlander Ultron 28 millimeter F2 lens. I bought this lens as a cheap alternative to the Leica 28 mil lenses, but then later went and bought the Leica 28 mil equivalent lenses anyway. Very good lens. So I'm not using it for a long time. 28 F2, usable wide open. I used to use it on my Leica M9 for, for wedding photography and for portraits. I can show you an example. Just to be aware, the 28 f2 is a much bigger lens than the f4 scope R's. So this is an Ultron, this is a scope R. Ultron, Voigtland Ultron lenses are normally bigger and normally faster, that is the design. Ultron normally means the quicker lenses, meaning like your f2's, f1.7, things like this. Lens number five, 35mm Voigtland color scope R. So good, I have two. Black is M mount, silver is LTM mount. All these LTM mount lenses I've bought more recently and I've brought, they've all been bought specifically to be used on either the Besser L, which I've shown you, which has no range finder, so you have to basically guess your focus. The Besser L is more optimized for wider lenses, 15 mil, 21 millimeters, 25 millimeters, at the, the most ideal. This is a Leica 3 camera. I've done reviews on these before. I can link it here.
because these cameras are small, I wanted small lenses to go on the small cameras. And because these, lens, these cameras are vintage, 1950s, between 1930s and 1950s, they are pre Leica M. So they only have the screw mount, LTM mount. So I had to buy LTM lenses to use this body with Voigtlander lenses. This is why I have to like M out Voigtlander Scope R 35mm f2.5 good alternative to Leica and it's really really small quick size check 50mm Simulux and 35mm Scope R really good walk around lens if you want something small and sharp and maybe a good alternative to maybe the 35mm Leica Summicron f2 this is obviously f2.5 but it's still a very good lens and it's a lot cheaper <laughs> lens number five the Voigtlander color scope r 35 f 2.5 this lens focuses to 0.7 meters standard range finder distance lens number six You've seen this lens before if you see my previous videos. This lens and some of the others were shown in my smallest lenses for like M mount cameras. Show it here. Lens number six, the Voigtlander Nocton Classic 35mm f1.4 lens. This is a very popular lens from what I see on the internet. This one and what I'm going to show you in a minute. Nice size. Half the size of our 50mm Summerlux 1.4, just as fast. You may have also seen this on my like M8 video, which was the last video I did. Because 35mm on a either 1.3 or 1.5 crop camera gives you enough equivalent to 50mm. The Nocton Classic, you can get single coated and multi coated versions. Single coated is better for black and white photography and has lower contrast. Multi coated is said to be better for colour photography. Again, this lens focuses at 0.7 metres. I can include an example photo here. It's the Voigtlander Nocton 40mm. Okay, the next lens is a bit of a beast. All the other Voigtlander lenses I own to use on Leica cameras are small, pretty much. The next lens isn't small and it's not light. This is the pretty amazing and more expensive than some of the others. Voigtlander Nocturne 35mm f1.2, a spherical, I think this is version 2, although it doesn't say it on the front. Size wise, it's bigger and heavier than the Simulux Leica lens. So that's put it in perspective. I've not shown you many lenses on all the different videos I've done, which are larger than a Simulux, other than like the 90mm f2 Summicron and the 75mm f2 Apo. Most of the lenses are smaller. This is the heavy lens. If you use this lens on an M camera, it's a bit heavy, it's a bit front heavy. A lot of the time, I went back to using a smaller 35 1.0 four lens instead, half the size. And for travel, I can carry two small lenses or one heavy lens. But this lens is very, very good. It has a trick a bit sleeve. Most of the lenses I'm showing you focus as close as 0.7 meters, most. This lens focuses at 0.5 meters. So if you use this lens on a Leica CL mirrorless camera, like a SL, any Leica mirrorless camera, or any Leica with live view, such as the M240, M10, and then obviously, all of the cameras, so your Sony, Fuji, Nikon Z, Canon EOS R, all of those cameras, you can use this lens at 0.5 meters. At 0.5 meters on a 35 1.2 lens, a spherical design. It's amazing. It's really, really good for portraits. This is my number one lens for the Leica CL system for the best possible portraits because I can get in as close as 0.5 meters at f1.2. So even on a crop sensor camera, 
the 1.5 APS-C crop gives me a 50 mil 1.2 equivalent, which is sharp enough wide open and gives me a really nice background separation. So it's slightly more expensive, more weight to carry around, but highly recommended, especially for portraiture. I'll include some example pictures. Last but not least, lens number 10. And this is a really special lens and I only got it before kind of the lockdown. So I've not really had a chance to use it to its full potential. But this is the very quirky, slightly ugly Voigtlander Helia 50 millimeters f3.5 lens. You may wonder, number one, why would you buy such an ugly lens? Number two, why would you buy a f3.5 50 mm lens? Like where's the background separation? Where's your nice book at f1.4, f2? This has one of the best subject background separation capabilities of any lens for 35 millimeters. And it's a Helia design, meaning it's also one of the sharpest lenses ever designed for 35 mil. At the time of release, this was, I think, the sharpest 35 mil lens on a par with Leica lenses, Leica top end lenses. So it's basically a cheap, like a Summicron 50mm Apo lens at an absolute fraction of the price. Yes, it's ugly and it's got a, I'll tell you, because I had to buy it on eBay, it has a 27mm filter thread. How crazy is that? I had to buy this specially and import it from China or Japan. The cap, it comes with a hood, but I tend to use it without to make it smaller. It's a modern lens, so it's not gonna flare so you don't really need a hood on a modern lens. Okay, so that was lens number 10. Voigtlander Helia 50mm f3.5 Leica M mount. There's also an LTM mount. Okay, so that was my 10 Voigtlander lenses in probably more than 10 minutes. Just to give you a taste of what these what Voigtlander can offer your camera in terms of size. These lenses are tiny. So that's how small they are. I just wanted to give you a why I buy Voigtlander. Generally speaking, they are small. Three reasons to buy Voigtlander lenses, especially LTM mount, Leica mount, even if you're not using a Leica camera. They are small rangefinder lenses. They are a fraction of the cost of Leica lenses. 95% as sharp as Leica lenses from my own experience. I prefer them often because they're smaller. Because I have a lot of manual focus lenses, you probably don't appreciate how good they are because to me, they're just normal. I wanted to do a slightly different format for the end of this video and share five photographers, some of which you'll be very aware of. They are familiar faces on YouTube. I searched for popular photographers using Voigtlander lenses. I will link their videos in my video They've not asked me to, I'm not gonna get any kickback or anything. I just want to give you a broader view of how good Voigtlander lenses are. So what I'll do, I'll link five photographers using Voigtlander lenses. And if you want to look at the videos, you can do, and it will give you a different viewpoint. But if you're used to a kit lens in your mirrorless camera, and you don't know anything different than an autofocus kit lens, you've got some good times coming if you buy a Voigtlander lens or a manual focus lens. I wanted to include other photographers to kind of open your eyes if you're new to the world of manual focus lenses, just to show you how good they are. So I'm gonna include five photographers. I've tried to split it so they're using different systems. Some of the photographers are using Voigtlander lenses on film cameras, such as what I do much of the time. I can literally fit this camera in my jacket pocket. How does the lens feel? It's built extremely well. One photographer is using Voigtlander lenses on Sony. And especially full frame lenses are usually pretty big and heavy. One photographer is using Voigtlander lenses on Fuji. Bodes well. For Fujifilm, this is a uh, Voigtlander lens, of course. And one photographer is using Voigtlander lenses on a Nikon Z or Nikon Z mirrorless camera. 
software to enable you to use the M mount lenses on your current camera body. One of the reasons I swapped from Nikon DSLR to Leica is to make use of small lenses. And in particular, the first lens I was using was the Voigtlander Nocturne 40mm and the Voigtlander Color Scope R 21mm f4 lens. Those two lenses basically made me move to Leica because I picked up a Voigtlander Besser R3A film camera, discovered how amazing these lenses are and how small they are. And then I was like looking at my amazing film cameras and I was looking at my crap DSLR and I'm like, I need to move, <laughs> I need to swap systems. So that was why I swapped systems. So the, the new age of mirrorless is making that a lot easier for people. In the old days it was expensive because the only option back then really was Leica or Micro Four Thirds was just kind of coming out. Sorry for the slightly rushed video, I was trying to make it shorter for you. If you found it useful, please like, subscribe and share and then I'll know to make more of the same. And if you want me to do a review on a particular lens that I've shown you today, one of these 10 Voigtlanders, let me know in the comments and I will do so. Thanks for watching.